It was June 27, 1844, when my father was shot and killed by a mob. I don't remember much of that time. It is glimpses of memory. I remember tears and feeling afraid at times, and not only around the death of my father, but in the years that followed. Alexander, will you take that up to grandmother? Yes, mother. Oh, some jam. Be watchful if she is sleeping. I won't wake her if she is. I have a tray for you, Grandmother. Thank you. Careful, the tea's hot. Oh, I'm gonna best set it here so it can cool. Well, what have you been doing today? Well, I've just come from the cemetery. I wish I could go visit there again. I fear I am too feeble now. It is very confusing as I think back on that time after father died. I imagine so. It was the most difficult time for all of us, especially your mother. What do you remember? I've been told bits. I remember someone coming in the middle of the night with the news. Yes. Cousin Lorenzo was the one who bore the news to us. You were just a young boy then. Alexander, what are you doing? I was thirsty. Did you get some water? Go on then, back to bed. When will father be home? I don't... Soon. Sweetheart, I'm sure he will be home soon. Go on, get in bed. There had been knocks many nights before at the home. Travelers looking for a warm meal in the bed, warnings of an approaching mob, families seeking safety. They came even before the hotel wing of the mansion house was built. They knew they would be welcome. And when they came, the person who took care of them, cooked their meals, turned down their beds, tended to the sick, was Emma. But this night, something's different. Aunt Emma, I just came from Carthage.
Mary. They're bringing them. Them home. I want to watch for when they are near. Your father and uncle were so loved when they were brought back to the mansion house to Emma and Mary. The novel legion stood at attention and thousands lined the streets mourning their loss. Emma, please. You fainted three times already. You are still so weak. She was no stranger to loss. Six babes were taken too soon. I am strong now. I can see him now. But experience doesn't make grief easier. Joseph and your Uncle Hiram dead. The mob wasn't resting. Their hate didn't lessen. We hardly were able to grieve. Folks said it couldn't be done. They said we would lose the government to their control. Well, not anymore. They said our way of life would be taken from us. We proved them wrong. We sure did. That man who hid behind his religion has preached his last foul sermon. What we did yesterday will be written in all of the history books. But we're not done yet. What do you have in mind? The body of Smith and his brother have been returned to their followers. They will be celebrated as heroes, martyrs even. We've got to hit them again while they're down. Missourians have offered $1,000 bounty for the bodies. $1,000? We need to make the message clear. The Mormons are not welcome in Illinois. What am I? I'm so sorry. We'll miss him so much. Thank you. Mother Smith. I'm so sorry. Thank you. My condolences, Miss Smith. Thank you. I understand this is a difficult time. Yes. Perhaps you could ease my mind with something that has troubled me. With Joseph gone, who will make payments on the properties? The properties? Yes, that Joseph bought for the church. His estate carries a lot of debt. Now, in my position, you would be this concerned. This isn't the time. Mr. Rockwell, I hardly want to seem indelicate, but. Excuse us. That man's lucky I didn't toss him out the door. Yes, his timing left much wanting. I have word that Carthage Law is looking for Joseph and Hiram's murderers, but... I know. The law has not been on our side yet. I don't think that that will change. The governor was here two days ago. I asked him to watch over Joseph. Not even he could help. He never had any intention to do so. What? That evening, I'd forgotten my hat. I interrupted the governor meeting with others. They were saying the deed is done. 
He knew what would happen. He let it happen. He was in such a hurry to leave. I thought it strange. Now you know why. Have we no friends? We've more enemies. The bounty on Joseph and Hiram. It's a thousand dollars. Dead or alive. The mobs plan to collect on it. They would need the bodies to prove it. Haven't they done enough? Haven't Mary and I lost enough? I'm sorry, Porter. You lost a friend too, and I sometimes forget that you knew Joseph longer than I. I would follow him anywhere. Even Carthage, if he had let me. He could not have asked for a better friend. I suspect the mob will try tomorrow, <clears throat> after the funeral. Porter, we cannot let them take my husband again. I have an idea. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sister. Brother. Thank you so much for coming. We'll see you at the burial soon. The families want to have some time alone. Thank you again. Keep their bodies safe. It was late at night when Emma and Mary sought to it. Mother? Joseph, what are you doing up? Where are you going? I have something to take care of. Father? Yes? Do you think the Heavenly Father hears our prayers? Because I asked him to take care of father, and now he's gone. And I'm sure that he will. Oh, I love you. That's the signal. Come, hurry.
shovel. You both need rest. We can see this through. All right then. I think I got this one. Help me. Together. Let's get that top Ah! Where are the bodies? They didn't bury them here. Hurry, put the lid back on. Why bother? I don't want them to know we were here, you hear me? We cover this up again. Is it worth it to even? I will not give them the satisfaction. All right. Help me with this. Thwarting those men was a small victory. But in truth, the loss wore on us all. Emma? Oh, Mother Smith. What time is it? Past noon. I should get back to the children. No, no. There's no need. We had so much hope coming here. A new town. A fresh start. Was it all for naught? I wrote to Joseph. I asked him to come home. And if I had not, I feel he would still be with us today. That he might still be here. No. This is all part of God's plan. I didn't understand it at the time. But just after little Alexander was born, the Spirit of God whispered to me. Saying that in five years' time, Joseph would triumph over his enemies. But it is his enemies who have triumphed. No, I just think that they've won. All they've done is put Joseph beyond their reach and secured him his glory. And perhaps it is not his fate that I mourn so much as, so much as my own. Sometimes I find myself wishing I could have gone with him. Is that selfish of me? There's no shame in looking forward to the Lord's rest. He promised me that one day that I would have all of my children and now I have lost. You are sealed to Joseph for all eternity. You will have Joseph and all of your children. <laughs> I am sure of it. <laughs> Didn't Uncle Samuel pass soon after father? Yes. He arrived in Carthage soon after the mobs had killed Joseph and Hiram. He had to hurry back to Nauru with the mob still pursuing him. He rode so hard that he fell ill not long after that. He did not recover. Just like mother. You've lost children too. Our lives have had plenty of tragedy. Your mother has lived with that the shadow of danger over her head ever since she and Joseph were married. Was it ever too hard? 
the Lord sees to it that it is never more than any of us can bear. We may be hit by waves of grief, fear, pain, yet with each wave, he carries us until we can stand. He lets us feel what we need to feel, then takes care of the rest. <laughs> How about this tea? Yes, it's, it's cooler now, Grandmother. What happened after the funeral? Unfortunately, there wasn't much time to grieve before practical matters demanded attention. I thought the housework for the children was hard enough. I forget you have guests you must ready beds for too. The work never ends. How are the children? There are tears at some point every day, for us all. The older children especially, having lost their mother and now their father. I fear I alone am not enough. You are their rock. They love and need you. Do you ever fear you will fail? All those years when Joseph was gone, traveling, in jail, hiding. I thought those were difficult, but this is different. It will be different for the rest of our lives and the children's lives. The Lord will ease our pain someday. I take comfort in the knowledge that Hiram and I are still in this together, just as you and Joseph are. But there is so much distance between here and there and so much work to do. I worry for our children but then there are the guests, the farm, and all of the debts in Joseph's name. They will fall to me now. I heard Mother Smith talk of it. She fears the creditors will come after Joseph's estate and use up all the property there is. I know. I'm sorry. I do not mean to alarm you. If I can help, thank you. It is a lot to take in. Yes. As I understand it, Joseph is the trustee on many properties meant for the church, but he made himself personally responsible for the debt and payment of those properties. We need a new trustee appointed. Someone who can make the necessary payments and decisions so that the lands are not taken away. I do not think we can appoint someone on our own. We would need permission from the apostles. The brethren are too far away on missions and other business. By the time they arrived here, it would be too late. I suggest patience in the matter. Yes, but patience will not ease when the debts must be paid. Joseph already owed $70,000 from before Nauvoo. Others were able to declare bankruptcy, but Joseph wasn't. I'm already responsible for that debt. Then let us appoint a temporary trustee. Would the trustee be able to act now? He would need to consult with the Twelve. We need someone who can take charge. Let us fix this now so that lands are not lost. Perhaps that is the best measure. Go to Carthage and have these deeds recorded with the county in your name, taking over the estate. I advise against that. You cannot simply claim all this as your own. I am not claiming it all as my own. I'll assume responsibility so that I can save it. We should think on this more. Allow me to counsel with Brother Marx, Brother Pratt, and some others. You told me the other day that if I would keep still, there would be enough to pay the debts and plenty for other uses. Can you say that still? We have less grain in the store than I would wish. And soap. Let's order some replenishments right away. All right. Sister Smith. Brother Amos. Sorry to intrude. No, not at all. How can I be of service? We received a visit from a bank man. I'm not sure I understand. About our land? He said we're going to lose it soon. What? The prophet had given us that bit of land for us to build a home on. We've not another place to go. 
I think that man who spoke with you is trying to stir up worry, but I feel your concern. I was wondering if there's anything I should do. No, I am already doing all that I can to preserve things the way they are for us all. Harley, the bills are coming in on the estate. You know that if something isn't done, that the creditors will see the land is sold off. We've discussed it at length. You cannot rush any action. We are speaking of the loss of scores of thousands. As his widow, all of Joseph's debt falls to me. If no one will make a decision, I will. I am not speaking out of concern only for myself, but other families depend on Joseph's estate. Others have settled there, and if those lands are lost... I think we should appoint someone else. A church leader, perhaps. Yes, all right. William Marks, he is the president of the stake there. Why not him? This isn't an issue for just one local authority. This is the business of the church and its general leaders. And as such, I fear that we must wait until the rest of the 12 return. Barley is right. The best thing that we can do now is nothing. Doing nothing means we risk losing much in terms of dollars and cents. We cannot and will not suffer the authorities and principles of the church to be trampled underfoot all for the sake of pecuniary interest. That is convenient for you to say. The bills are not arriving in your name. This is not tied to you providing for your families. I am not trying to make this any more difficult. This is a delicate time for the church. For us all. Whatever you do, do not take on the entire estate. It's church property you would be meddling with. I don't see how you leave me much choice. Would you see all that Joseph has worked to obtain for the church, our family, and the other families is just taken away? Emma, please. I wish you would wait. I wish that you would act. They are exasperating. They don't seem to understand. I'm sorry to see such disagreement between you and the brethren. But I have to admit, I can see both sides of this. They are not the ones whose livelihood is at stake. They are not the ones whose husbands were killed. Could you pass me that towel? You and I aren't responsible for the church. Surely we owe the brethren some deference. Not if they undertake to trample me. I'm sure they are not. They treat me differently. As if I want to overstep for some ill reason. It is hard to trust someone who does not trust you. You don't think you are overreacting? Mary, of all people, I thought that you would understand. Yes, but I admit I have not near the troubles you face. I'm trying to understand. Joseph wrote to me a month ago before... He said I was to sell all that I needed to support me, Lucy, and the children. Did he not mean it? I'm sure he did. Am I alone in this? I don't envy the position you are in. But you are never alone. Heavenly Father, I just, I can't see through it all. I don't know what's right for the church anymore. I worry for my children. I don't know how to protect them. How to provide for them. How can I do it all? Please, help me. Help me to know what to do. It's a little unorthodox for a woman to be taking on such a complex estate. I'm perfectly capable, sir, I assure you. I understand you're wanting to secure your home, but the land, this is a lot of land to take on. I know. Joseph purchased most of this land for the church, and I have every intention of making sure they get it back. I'm just assuming responsibility for now. There are other ways that we could arrange this. Not in a timely manner. I'm sorry, but it has to be this or risk losing the property. Very well, you certainly have the right to proceed this way. I hope it works in your favor. Your mother assumed responsibility of so much. 
because there was no one else to step forward in time to handle it. It wasn't a popular decision. Some mistook her intent. But Emma's taking over did save some properties and homes. But despite her best efforts, matters went out of her hands not long after that. Why? She didn't qualify as an administrator of the estate. So the Hancock County Court took over. They appointed a new trustee. And under his actions, Emma was left with very little. And later he left the state with things that, simply put, did not belong to him. How can someone do that? You would think no one would dare treat a widow like that. But Emma was hardly immune to such treatment. She worked so hard for you and the other children. And you know she would not sit back and enjoy a life of luxury. Do you remember she had to buy back the mansion house? And the farm, and the homestead. I didn't understand why, though. Emma had to sell off a great deal of property to pay the creditors from Joseph's old debts. There were public auctions. The selling off of family things it was a very trying time. And in addition, there were safety concerns. The mobs were a continual threat. Nauvoo was the biggest city in the state back then, bigger than Chicago. Perhaps our numbers and influence made some fear of us. Well, hello, Mrs. Smith. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear about your husband. Come on. The mobs wanted all the Mormons gone. Right, gone. And having the name Smith did not lessen the danger for us all, especially your older brother. Early that year, January 1844. Your father gave Joseph III a blessing. He was blessed to be his successor. It was a bittersweet moment for Emma. The potential of a wonderful destiny, but the burden of a great responsibility. But he was only 11 or 12 then. Well, no one expected anything of him at the time. Even Brigham Young asked that it not be spoken of to protect the boy from those who wanted to hurt the church. Then there were others who were stepping forward to lead. It was a time of some confusion. In August, Sidney Rigdon and Brother Brigham addressed the saints. No, no, keep, keep digging. There's got to be one here. There's a worm! Oh. Are you sure you don't want to come? It seems everywhere I turn, people are asking for my support, but it's not up to me. Do you still favor William Marks? We see eye to eye on some things. I've had Brother Rigdon and others come to see me. I feel like they are telling me what I want to hear, but is it the truth? I'm just not certain. We're not the only one unsure. It is new for us all, but the Lord will make his will known. Shall we go? Of course. Ah! Don't this hurt make me get a warm! No, I'm not. Hey! <laughs> Why can't the boys do this? Frederick would love it. <laughs> I'm afraid this is work, not play. We have to finish this for the guests to eat today and then move on to the next chore. Oh, Emma, you should have been there. What? Is everything all right? Yes, we went to the meeting. <laughs> Brother Rigdon spoke for some time. Oh, indeed. <laughs> there was nothing moving in his words. I felt empty. But then Brigham Young stepped forward. He spoke with such power, such authority, did he not, Mother Smith? He was remarkable. He reminded us that Joseph had conferred the keys of the apostleship on himself and the Twelve and that we have acknowledged that the Twelve are presidents of the whole church. He said, do you want the church properly organized? I tell you in the name of the Lord that no man can put another between the Twelve Apostles and the Prophet Joseph. 
why it made such sense. Just like with Joseph, God must appoint a prophet, not us. Oh, it is so much clearer than I'm saying it now, was it not, Mother Smith? Mm -hmm. Emma, I don't know how else to say it, but as Brigham Young spoke, his voice, it sounded like Joseph's. And as I looked on his face, even it did shine with Joseph's countenance. He said Joseph laid the foundation for a great work and we must build upon it a kingdom such as there never was in the world. The spirit I felt was so strong. Brigham asked the people to sustain the 12 as the first presidency and nearly all raised their hands. Poor brother Rigdon. It did not turn out as he wished, but it is for the best. We are in God's hands. Did mother want brother young to lead? I don't think she wanted to get into the middle of who should lead next. She had stood by your father before. Now it was someone else's turn to lead. Then why do people think Mother and Brother Young did not get along? Well, perhaps they didn't understand Emma and Brigham's burdens. Brigham and the Brethren had much to worry about with the mob still attacking the saints in areas further from Nauvoo. Emma and Brigham had different responsibilities, and they saw differently on how to resolve certain situations. They didn't agree on everything. They tried to do what they thought was best. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Travel safely. Brother Richards, please come in. Thank you, Emma. How are the children? I think even they are ready for some relief from this heat. <laughs> Aren't we all? Well, I've come to inquire after something your husband worked on. The new translation of the Bible. Yes, I have it. Oh, wonderful. A marvelous work Joseph did. It's an important manuscript. Yes. May I have it? Have it? Oh, for the church. Brother Brigham sent me. I don't feel now is the time for me to part with it. I have been its guardian for many years. It will be protected in our hands. Allow me some time to think on it, won't you? Of course. Of course. Perfect. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for your business. Well, this is lovely work. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Smith. Hmm? I was so saddened to hear about the loss of your husband. Thank you, Mr. Biderman. How are you and the children? We are managing. Sister Smith. Well, I wish you all of the best. Thank you. Good afternoon. Brother Richards, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. I've got some great news. Oh? Brother Brigham has authorized for you to have some additional properties. Oh? Yes, it's the Quincy property. It's just a matter of exchanging something for it. Such as? The Bible translation manuscript. Brother Brigham is eager to have it safely with the church. Joseph entrusted it to me. I carried that manuscript with us as we were chased from our homes by the mobs. I kept it safe in the skirts of my dress. I held my children's hands as we cut through the woods, crossing rivers and brooks. Please, the concern for its safety is in our hearts too. What would be a suitable trade for it? I want no gain or fortune from it. But it was entrusted to me, and I, I cannot neglect that duty. 
Next. Is this able to be repaired or am I in need of a new one? Other items already had been given to the brethren in the name of the church's interest. But the Bible translation was to Emma a responsibility. And she kept it. Besides, it would not be the last item asked of her to give up. Oh, Mother Brother Clayton's come. Oh. Morning, Sister Smith. Oh, forgive me, I wasn't expecting you. Can I get you something to eat? No, thank you. I'm here on some business. What business? Well, to preserve Joseph's work in the gospel, there has been discussion that we need to keep records and items related to Joseph's endeavors. So I've come to collect a few such things. I see. Such as? His desk and writings for now. The church has much of what Joseph has written already. His private records and notes, his library, things that were his. When I asked for them back, I was told since he was the president, his correspondence and documents were now property of the church. Emma, please. It is not an unreasonable request to have these items returned. Returned? These are his things. Am I to have nothing to remember my husband by? The desk belongs to the church, and the papers in it are his work on the church's behalf, so I must insist. When Joseph and I married, we started our lives together. And from that point on, we did not have a clear line of what was our families and not. So you can insist all you want, but I have other business to attend to. give up more pieces of Joseph. I have already handed over so many of his books and other writings, his thoughts. Each of the brethren have lost a friend and a leader in Joseph too. And can't they understand why it's so important to me? I understand the interest on behalf of the church, but they are learning and trying the best that they can. It's hard give up anything that was his. But Joseph is not in a piece of wood, paper, or iron. It is in here. Stop! Julia, will you run to the Claytons? Yes, Mother. Leave where that brother Clayton can come and fetch Father's desk. Joseph!
Both Emma and the brethren were trying to preserve Joseph's memory and his work. Their ideas in doing so didn't always align. Emma had held on to some papers and some other items, which added to the tension. Though there was much that she gave up. Is that when people started talking? I remember something in the newspaper when I was younger. Well, it wouldn't be the only time something was written about Emma. Not that experience made it any easier for her. Such weeds to contend with. I've convinced the children to help me at home. When my children help, they pull what's not meant to be weeded. <laughs> One of the risks, I suppose. Get it here! What's it say? Give it. It doesn't matter. What is it? Nothing. Let me have it, please. Give it here. It says you're weak in the faith and you're given all sorts of trouble. It ain't true. No, it's not. Don't you worry about this. I could use your help, come on. Alexander, come help me, dear. Just the weeds. The stories people told and made your mother seem like she was against the brethren of the church. I know she felt the sting of those accounts. <coughs> Fetch me my handkerchief. <coughs> there were good reports, too. <coughs> there were? In the times and seasons. Printed something from the apostles. They said that your mother was an honorable woman. She would never discredit the name of her husband. They said that the rumors that were spread in the papers were to injure the Latter-day Saints, including your mother, cause a division in the church. I recall us meeting the brethren here and there, and I always felt that all was well. Brickham even came to visit around that time. I think to check up on me. <laughs> that was good of him. And there were good things to come. For a few months, your mother went back to the homestead with you and the other children. She looked forward to the birth of your brother. <laughs> it's a boy. Just as Joseph prophesied. Is he gonna live, Doctor? Tell me this one's gonna live. This baby is as healthy as they come, Emma. Year, the situation in Neville brought new uncertainty and danger. Brother Brigham! What is wrong? They've done it. The Nafu Charter's been repealed. Come, tell me all. Without the Charter, the town lost its ability to protect itself. There were threats of violence against the brethren of the church. They worried about our family, too. Boys, wipe the dirt from your feet! Oh, Parley, it's good to see you. How can I help you? Emma, you know Brother Huntington. Yes, of course, hello. He's gonna stay here. Oh yes, we always have room for a guest at the mansion house. No, he's going to stand guard. I don't, I don't understand. Brigham is posting guards at all the homes of the Twelve, and for you and Mother Smith and Mary, we can't risk any harm to come to you or the children. That is kind of you to think of us. Until further notice, we ask that you stay here at the house. Oh, Parley, I don't know about that. I can fend for myself. <laughs> don't I know it. But this is serious, Emma. 
We have learned of threats against you and the children. If the mob got to any of you, it would be a victory for them. This is for your own protection. And when there are errands to be run? We'll have someone help you with that. So I am to stay indoors all hours of the day? Night would be good too. Oh. No one wants it this way. There's just no choice. We owe it to Joseph. You know he would want you kept safe. I suppose you are right. If you need anything, Brother Huntington, anything at all, you let me know. Will do, Sister Smith. I'm here to serve you. Come on, let's go. Whoa there. Where do you think you're going? I don't know, out to play in the fields. Maybe down by the river? Your mother know you're headed out? We always go there. Well, things are different now. I'm here to see that no harm comes to you or is found by you. Back inside. <laughs> we just want to play. I understand your plight, but what if something happened because I let you run off? It's not fair. It's like being a prisoner in our own home. My children cannot enjoy a time to go and play with their friends. When I am allowed out, I'm hustled from place to place, as if someone is chasing me. Brother Young means to keep us safe. Does he? You doubt that? Or does he mean to keep me isolated? To keep watch on me? Em, be reasonable. I'm trying, Mary. But you know the rumors that are being spread about me. Is this protection meant to keep me and my children safe? Or just meant to keep me out of the way? As I look back, I think that Brigham was trying to keep us safe. But with the disagreements on the property and the rumors being spread in the papers, it was easy for your mother to feel suspicious. And then your uncle made the situation with the brother an even harder. Uncle William. He started to make claims that he should lead the church. Came back to Nauvoo in May 1845. His wife was ill. She died before the end of the month. And although William was ordained the patriarch, he was very unhappy. How are your daughters? They miss their mother, but I think they'll be all right in time. Nauvoo will help. They seem to be taken with your new little one, Emma. I am pleased that David can spend time with more of his cousins. Quite the legacy we have here. And yet it should be more. What do you mean? Brigham Young has overstepped. Our family should be involved much more than it is in the church. You are already the patriarch, William. For now. But we're meant for things beyond that. Joseph would have wanted it. I think so, but only if that's what God wanted. What is that to me? Emma is simply saying you shouldn't force anything. Besides, I think that you could serve well as patriarch. Exactly. But William was not easily dissuaded. He pursued his claims quite publicly at times. Mother. Yes, Joseph? I, I found this on the street. Well, what does it say? It says that Uncle William should be the guardian of the church until I am old enough to lead. Me. Is it true? Don't you worry about that. I thought you were going fishing with your friends. They, they've all read it. I don't, I don't want them to. All right. Let's go inside then. Come on. I know my brother. I know his heart and his wishes, and where we are today is not it. Brother Brigham has deprived my family of all honor and station in the church. We've no word of controlment, and we should not be so shut out. If I were in my rightful place, I would have things squared up right here. It's easy to speak for someone who cannot correct you. He was my brother. And let me tell you, without me around, 
you'll not see any improvements in Nauvoo. Think of my poor mother, Joseph's mother, broken down as she is and almost worn out with the accumulated troubles of years. She is neglected and Nauvoo is neglected. And you think you can do any better? You think you can get the mobs to leave us alone? They want your head just as much as Brother Brigham's. Your brother-in-law sure is making a ruckus. I hope you're not aiming to speak up for him. It's not right. Excuse me. It will only be a matter of time before you all see who belongs and who doesn't. He's always been quick to anger. Yes. You think he would be content serving as patriarch? Now he uses Mother Smith as an excuse for his claims and to raise money for his cause. I fear he is looking out for what he wants, not God. Does he not understand that church leadership isn't governed by family relationship? The Twelve together constituted the presidency after Joseph's death. How can he come and claim it as any other way when Joseph took pains to make that clear? William has his good traits and his bad, like everyone. Oh, but I fear he will do what he wants regardless. William was excommunicated from the church in October. He came back to Nauvoo in 1846, claiming that another man, James Strang, be in control. He kept on saying that the family was behind him, and I fear others in town were anxious about our intentions. But I don't hear anyone talk ill about you. Why? Why would they talk about your mother? It's easy to speak without thinking. <laughs> God knows what's in our hearts. He knows what each of us experiences. And he and only he will be the one to judge us in the end. I want you to know that there were so many people who wished your mother and you the very best, even as they left Nauvoo, and we stayed. I remember them leaving across the river, but not much more. Some people who come here now say that mother abandoned the saints. Every person had to decide what to do for themselves and their family. In the fall of 1845, the mobs carried out their threats and started to attack Navu. We were under pressure to leave. Help! Over here! Robert! Robert, bring the children! Get them! Girls, get in the wagon. Come on, let's go. Chase them? No. You better keep running, we'll get you all. Every last one of you. Check and see if they left anything good behind. Hurry up. We got plenty more Mormons to run out. So much violence. We have suffered so much over the years. and whomever she could. Oh, this is Mr. Smith. Shoulder. Let me look, have a little look. This way. There we go. Now be 
brave. It's okay. It's okay. Ow. 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 Better now? Okay, hold it here. There you go. Now keep this wrapped up for a week or so, and he'll be as good as new. Thank you. Thank you so much. No one's on our side here. The mobs and the governor, to different degrees, seek to drive us out. We knew this would come. Where would we go? In the West, we'll be left alone to live the way that God would have us live. I had hoped for more time here, but that is beyond our control. But when could we leave? We go into the cold of winter soon. When the rivers run again, and there is grass for the animals, then we will leave. In the meantime, there is much to do to prepare. How soon do we tell the saints? Immediately. Clothing for the families that were attacked. Oh, thank you. I'm dividing it up as well as I can among them. So much to prepare with Brother Brigham's announcement. I know. The men are scrambling to finish the temple so that we can complete the ordinances. There is so much to build for the journey. I passed the carpenter on the way. He was laden with wood for hand carts and wagons. I hope there is enough to go around. I heard some merchants are raising their prices. They know they have the advantage if it is some item we need for the journey. I myself have been preparing my list of what I need. I do not know if I will be ready when the time comes. Better run, Mr. Smith! Get them! Shoot them! Keep running! Don't let them stop! Keep running! Don't stop! Keep running! Two down. How many Smiths left? Will we ever stop? Emma Smith? Keep running! That son of hers. We'll chase him from town Don't. to town. Don't stop! Shoot him! Will we ever stop running? Julia, what are you doing? Nothing. My friends are busy sewing close for the Travel West. I am sure that they will have time for you still. I know. They seem so excited, but... I... I'm afraid. Are you excited? To leave? No. No, I'm not. I spoke with Sister Burke today. She asked if you were preparing to go west. Not yet. Not yet? There isn't time to dawdle. I have not yet decided if I will go. I suppose I assumed you would. May I ask why you are unsure? Mother Smith's health is not well enough to travel. You know she'll go if you do. Perhaps. But should she? The journey will be long and hard. Would you see her go if it would injure her health? Is that the only reason? <sighs> Joseph's sisters are talking of staying. William's claim to a position in the church has convinced them to stay and support him. But you do not support William. No. The family is an added reason to stay. The brethren have been kind. They have offered any assistance on the journey, yet it is not decided. I suppose it was not a question in my mind. The saints will go west. I am one of them. I will go. I watch so many that I know and love prepare to leave. And yet the feeling to go with them to move is not there. Why not? I'm afraid it will not be safe. What is to stop our enemies from simply following after us? But hair is not safer. I don't know. And that is the problem. There is no guarantee. Without my husband, he was my anchor. As it is, I feel as if I am merely existing, facing one problem or decision, waiting for the next. There is no rest. Does that 
that make any kind of sense to you? I can understand that it is difficult. And of course the family is a factor that must weigh heavily in your decisions. But will you pray about it? Of course. I know this gospel is true. That knowledge has been a dividing line in my own family. My brother, my sister and I are hoping for peace. But we can't deny what we know. And with that knowledge, I know I will follow wherever the Lord desires his people to go. Please, ask the Lord what you should do. I have been. And I will continue to ask until I know. The letter was published in the New York Sun in December. I have not the least objection that these petty tyrants removed to some remote place. I have never for a moment believed in what my husband called his apparitions and revelations as I thought him laboring under a diseased mind. It made Emma appear that she had renounced her faith in the Gospel and Joseph. <clears throat> I know no peace. Even among my supposed friends, look, the paper says that General Bennett verified that the letter was mine. Preposterous. People who really know you will know it's not true. Will they? You don't see the way they look at me. All the things they say. No. Some believe it. I have to do something. I have to show the world that this, it's all lies. She started by writing General Bennett, who we later came to suspect wrote the forged letter. I never was more confounded with a misrepresentation than I am with that letter. And I am greatly perplexed that you should entertain the impression that the document should be a genuine production of mine. Good. And this one? To the newspaper itself. Some of the guests are asking for refreshment. Oh, here, will you take them this? Thank yes. you. To the editor of the New York Sun. Sir, I wish to inform you and the public through your paper that the letter published Tuesday, December 9th, is a forgery, the whole of it. And I hope that this notice will put a stop to all such communications. Is it too short? No, I think it's just right. It's forceful, but civil. Well, my first few attempts were not. <laughs> <laughs> but will it do any good? If they print it. Do we have butter? Yes. The son never printed that letter. But the local paper did come the next month. However, I suspect that Emma still felt ostracized. Here, drink a little of this. <coughs> it's okay. There. I'm gonna leave a little of this with you. Just mix a pinch in with a cup full of water and have her drink twice a day. I think I can manage that. Thank you so much for stopping by, Sister oh. Smith. I'm so grateful. 
This town is so fortunate to have someone so generous. You will be a great blessing to all of us when we leave this civilization. You're making too much of it, really. No, it's true. I don't know how we'd manage without Sister Smith along. I'm sorry to say, I won't be much help to you once you leave Nauvoo. I'm not going. It's true then? Why ever not? Why would you go instead? I'm staying here. I don't blame anyone for leaving. But my place is here. Of anyone, I thought you would know that your place is with the prophet of God. Surely there is no place more important than that. I don't expect anyone to understand. I don't even know if I fully understand. But my home is here. Oh, Sister Calhoun, I hope you don't think the worst of me. I could never think that of you, Sister Smith. I just... I just can't imagine traveling west without you, though. You are too kind. Thank you. I will miss your friendship. All this blubbering. I can't understand it. I crossed an ocean and half a continent to follow the prophet. Your husband, no less. And now you will set this kind of example to the saints? Shame on you, Sister Smith. These people look up to you. The sisters adore you, and now you will abandon them? Shame indeed. The government is sending troops to interfere with our journey. Some nonsense and rumor about us taking arms beyond the country's borders. And the governor is sending men after us as well. They will try to arrest you again. Spring won't come quickly enough. I propose we leave sooner. We must tell our people to be ready to leave within hours of our word. How soon? A mere matter of days. Louisa, how are you? Oh, Emma, I don't know how I will be ready. What else do you need? I have the last of the blankets, but I need a pot too. I am all out of pots. Have you tried the blacksmith? Perhaps there is Nothing's some... left. All the stores in town have very little. I have a pot. I can spare. It's at the house. I'll have Julia bring it by. Thank you. Come along. It's strange. I feel as if I've lost all my friends. Everyone has a new purpose preparing for the trek. I miss being part of a common cause like that. They haven't even left yet, and already I miss them. Well, I'd rather see you go and stay around a withered old woman like me. <laughs> Certainly you would do good among the people. But you aren't going. If my daughters went, I would go. But they're staying. So I will, too. Do you think I should reconsider? It's not a matter of what I think. It's what the Lord thinks that matters. You must do what you think is right for you and your family. No one else bears that responsibility. Though he had much to worry about, Brigham and his wife Marianne visited before they left. It's not much, but we wanted you to have these. Oh, Marianne, you did not have to. Oh, we wanted to. There's only so much we can take west with us. But I wanted to leave you with something so you can remember us. Oh, I will cherish these. They are... You are welcome to come with us. I am... I know. You have made up your mind. But that doesn't lessen my worry for you and your family. I feel you'll be more vulnerable. We will not be here to protect you. The Lord will watch over us. Despite their different views and methods, I think that Emma and Brigham parted on good terms. Later, some things occurred which re-injured some feelings. But months after Brigham left, he sent me a letter inquiring about all of us here. 
and renewed the invitation to come west. I was touched by his concern. When did Brigham leave? He left with most of the saints in February. Simply crossing the river was a dangerous feat for everyone. Nauvoo held more than 12,000 saints who were preparing to leave. Such a group couldn't cross a river in those conditions, one wagon at a time. It would have taken months. How did they manage? A hard freeze descended on the city. The Mississippi froze from shore to shore. Wagon after wagon, family after family, they started to leave. Will they be safe? God will be with them. Seeing everyone go now, it... I thought I prepared myself to see them leave. I didn't. It will not be the same here now. In so many ways. Not without them. you anything else? No, no, this will be fine. Are you certain? Mm. Mm-hmm. So, most everyone left then? There were a few hundred of us left. A far cry from before. Aunt Mary didn't leave until almost when we had to. Yes. The fact that the saints were lingering on is what made the mobs angry. They couldn't understand why. Why did some stay? Was it that they did not have all the supplies that they needed? Well, for some, certainly. But others worked on the temple, the house of the Lord. And within it, God blesses us to have our families together always. Such a horrible day when someone burnt it to the ground two years later. I remember. Lewis was furious about that. Emma and I were heartbroken. But despite its destruction, it did not forfeit the work that had already been done inside. It took great work to build and to ready the temple. And for the few saints that were left here in 1846, they didn't know when they would have the chance to be in the temple again if they did not seize the moment then. And so they went. The mob saw this. And they saw it as a sign that the Mormons would not completely leave. They're still here. Who? Those Mormons. I saw some leave today. Some ain't the same as all. What you want to do? If they're not going to leave, we're going to start picking them off again, one by one. Throughout the summer, there were skirmishes with the mobs and the remaining saints. It was Lewis, actually, who tried to keep the peace. He did? He was appointed by the governor to represent the state militia. His task was to negotiate with the mob. There is no need for violence against the Mormons. Well, there wouldn't be, Mr. Bodiman, if they had done what they said they would. That's right. mm -hmm. They are leaving, and I must say, I am impressed at the speed with which they are leaving. For so many to make preparations to take such a long journey, they have done a great deed. But they are still here. Not many, and not for long. If you are concerned that they will suddenly decide to stay or return to Illinois, your fears are unnecessary. So you say. 
Yes. I cannot make any promises for the Carthage Grays or any other concerned citizens of Illinois. Yes. Then let me leave you with this to consider. The governor will not allow the situation to get out of control. Ah, well, we aim to help you control those Mormons. <laughs> I wasn't talking about controlling them. The situation worsened, though still another were trying to leave, including Mary. Mary left on the 8th of September. This one's for you. You are ready? Well, there will be items we wish we had, but I can't think of them now. We will be fine. Oh, I want you to have this. I hope it will be safe on the journey, but if it breaks, do not fret. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> we will be praying for you. See them again? Yes. If not in this life, then the next. You're positively shaking. Whatever's the matter? This just came for you, and the man who delivered it was none too friendly. Burn the house down if we don't leave. All right. Let's make up the children's beds downstairs tonight. Your mother knew she could not stay in Navajo long either. At least not until the danger subsided. Somebody tried to burn the house down. Was it the mobs? <gasps> Go get Julia. Get your brothers. Tell them to pack their things. You best be leaving. The mobs at the edge of town. <laughs> Boys! Joseph has a wagon ready. Take this out to Joseph. Tell him we are on our way. Wait here. Take this as well. Is that everything? There isn't room for more. Emma left just in time by boat. She took you and your siblings to the town of Fulton. The mobs attacked Nauvoo. 600 or more so people fled to the riverbanks. Some of those poor people couldn't find a boat to carry them away. There was one man who had a ferry, but he refused to let anyone aboard. His name was Armin Babbitt. I remember that name. Hmm. He was one of the men that Brigham had left behind to settle accounts and to sell properties of the church. And his methods were questionable, to say the least. What did he do? When your father was jailed in Carthage, he had sent for Babbitt. He was a lawyer he had been hired before. 
but he sent word back that it was too late. He was working for the other side, the very men that sought to imprison Joseph. <coughs> Where was I? Uh, leaving Nauvoo. Do you think we would have been safer if we had traveled west with the saints? Well, that's an interesting question. The saints went unscathed while they traveled. We got reports back of all the hardships they had to endure on their journey. Perhaps Emma's decision and mine was a good decision compared to a better one. I don't know if I would say that staying or going was bad. Emma knew what she had here. There was comfort in that. She didn't stay away from Nauvoo for very long, just a few months. We came back quite suddenly, I think. Emma had rented the mansion house to a Mr. Ventoul, and she had heard word from a friend, Dr. Bernheisel, that Mr. Ventoul was meaning to leave without paying months of rent. Turns out he was planning to flee with your mother's things. She arrived just in time. Uh, Mrs. Smith. You can leave everything right there, sir. I don't think he paid the monies that were owed to your mother. But she did manage to stop him. Navu wasn't the same. There were many rough characters. Rivermen, as they were called. See that? Excuse me. Nice things you've got here. Yes, you can purchase them inside the store. Why bother with such a formality? You stop it! How are you gonna stop us? May I help you, gentlemen? Nope. Just helping to carry some things in for Mrs. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Vitamin. Mrs. Smith. Burglaries were quite common. With no law present, the people had to protect themselves. It was a frightful time. Not my house. Let's see. It's okay. It's okay. I got you. I got you. It's okay. It's okay. One of Emma's friends was shot by her husband, being mistaken for a robber. How does she feel? Emma tended to her for as long as she could.
No. No, no. I'm sorry. I think the sense of fear throughout the city made Emma realize her days of making do on her own couldn't last. She needed something to change. Um, it's your mother. Oh, I think this thread will be far too dark. One oh, minute. It's, it's Mr. Biteman. Oh! <laughs> oh, confounded wig. Is that why she married Lewis? So he could protect us? I think there was more to it than that. They courted, <laughs> but certainly marrying Lewis was not a decision she took lightly. Your mother never stopped loving your father. He asked, and now waits for my answer. Have you made a decision? I thought I had, but I can't. I can't walk away from Joseph. Marrying Lewis does not mean you're walking away from Joseph. But it feels like betrayal. How could I do that to him? He's not here. So there's no betrayal. You're still an eternal family. Either I'm loyal to him always or I'm not. To love one person doesn't mean there's no room in your heart for someone else. Of course it's not going to be the same as what it was with Joseph. But you and Lewis care for one another. In a way, it shows Joseph you enjoyed marriage. You do not think he would be hurt? True love rises above that. It means a person selflessly feels the happiness of another person without expecting anything back. What about the children? How can I know Lewis will be good for them? Lewis looks to you to help raise his daughters. Isn't it natural that you would want his help raising your children? But I don't want to replace Joseph as their father. I don't want them to think I am forgetting. Of course not. But the influence of a father can come from someone who isn't their own flesh and blood. His presence can offer such comfort and protection for your children too. As she decided, opinions were expressed about marrying Lewis. Elman Babbitt never had trouble expressing what he thought. Good day, Mrs. Smith. Mr. Babbitt. Or should I call you Mrs. Biderman? This marriage of yours is not looked upon very favorably. It is by me and Mr. Biderman. Since we are the ones entering the marriage, you need not concern yourself. Mr. Biderman has no right to marry you. And by that same principle, you have no right to marry him. You of all people cannot tell me right from wrong. I'm sorry, sir, forgive me, but I will return when your shop isn't so crowded. <sighs> Alman spoke with Emma again, not long before he finally left us and Nauvoo. Sister Smith. I've come to offer you passage to the Salt Lake Valley. Has something changed that would make me want to leave? You and the children should move there. We're fine here, thank you. You may think so now, but I've been appointed to see Brigham's wishes through. And Brigham wishes to see you come west. I'm afraid you're not understanding. Nothing has changed that would entice me to leave the life I have here. Maybe not yet, but it's been determined to make you poor. So poor that I suspect you'll be willing and glad to move out there for protection. Is that a threat? It's my instruction and purpose, and I'll see it through. I'll say whatever you want, Alman. It may be possible for you to make me poor, but you could never make me poor enough to follow Brigham Young. The 
had been some correspondence from Brigham shared with us by Armin Babbitt and others, but none was so alienated as what he said that day. He implied his words were from the brethren. But I wonder if the message from Brigham was more of an invitation and not a threat or a demand that he made it seem to be. Who knows what Babbitt said about Emma's responses to Brigham? But regardless of what he thought, or what he said others thought, Emma wasn't swayed to leave. She began her new life with Lewis. They married on December 23rd, 1847. Some view that as odd since Joseph's birthday was December 23rd. But it simply was the day the marriage could be performed. I know people speculate about your mother and Lewis. But he and your mother work together to provide for you all. There is affection and respect. Lewis didn't try to make us forget about father. I remember a man was talking ill about father and Lewis didn't let him. He stood up for father. He wants Joseph's memory to live on. He's even agreeable to hang Joseph's portrait downstairs. <laughs> Grandmother? I'll be well enough. And she let you rest. Alexander. There are many people who knew your mother, and many who never met her, who will talk about her both good and ill. There's something I want you to understand. I know what she has had to endure. And I have never met a woman in my entire life that would endure such fatigue and hardship from month to month, year after year, with such courage, zeal, and patience your mother has. She has been tossed with uncertainty, lived through storms of persecution, the rage of men, which would have beaten down most any other woman. Never forget that. Never forget what a remarkable woman she is. I found that I would face the opinions of many men and women about my mother as I grew older but I am grateful for what my grandmother shared with me that day. She passed away May 14th, 1856. My mother missed her dearly. Grandmother was her friend, her confidant and guide. what she said about my mother. Despite what any person said or thought about Emma Hale Smith, I knew who she was. And I cannot ignore what she sternly declared to my siblings and me. I believe Joseph was everything he professed to be. I know Mormonism to be the truth and believe the church to have been established by divine direction. I have complete faith in it. My belief is that the Book of Mormon is of divine authenticity. I have not the slightest doubt of it. My mother continued on, full of faith, looking to God to help her through. She was charitable, always taking in a child or stranger who needed help, 
and hopeful. I remember her writing to my brother that she had seen many trying scenes in her life which she could not see or any good could come from them. But yet she felt a divine trust in God that all things should work for good. She held on to that hope and trust that all would be well in the end. And she looked forward to a time when our family would be together. I didn't understand just how deeply she wished for that until I returned to Nauvoo. When I came home, it felt just as it always was when I was a child. Except my mother was not busily going about so many chores and errands. She was ill. I summoned my brother Joseph immediately. We took turns staying awake with her throughout the night. Some nights we did not expect her to last until the morning. It wasn't long before she did not recognize me or Joseph or anyone else. She began to be agitated. She did not answer. She passed away before dawn, April 30th, 1879. I assumed she had been calling for my brother, but her nurse shared with me something that happened days before. My mother had a vision. Emma, come with me. My father led her to a mansion. He showed her the different rooms. It was beautiful. And then my father led her to a nursery. There was a babe in a cradle who mother recognized right away. It was Don Carlos, my brother, who died a few months after he was one year old.
she saw the Lord. I'm told years before my father died, my mother was given a blessing, which said she would see Jesus Christ. I don't understand it all, but it makes my heart swell to think of the joy she must have felt in that moment. Hearing about my mother's account, I wonder if her last words in calling for Joseph was not a call for my brother, but for my father. I think of her and father together with some of her children again. Can it really be so? It provides me a grand hope. I can imagine the joy mother must feel, and I am happy for her. I can hardly wait to see them all.